County, and welcome to another edition of Mondo Calaveras. I'm your host, Mike Taylor. Now, if you've seen me here on Public Access TV for a while, you know that one of my favorite things in life are the arts. And the most important organization in Calaveras County for the arts is, imagine this, the Calaveras County Arts Council. And with me today, we have somebody who, if you've watched this station for quite some time, you probably remember her. We have Kathy Mezzaferro. Hi, Mike. And, and I knew I was going to do it. I forgot your last name, Robin. Robin Maudlin. Maudlin. Yes, as soon as I went to say it, and Robin Maudlin. Kathy and Robin, welcome. Thank you. We're going to be all over the map on this, but first, let's kind of talk a little bit about what the Arts Council does, and we'll kind of go from there. Okay. Well, um, the Arts Council, the Calaveras Arts Council was formed in 1981, and its primary focus is to support nourish and awaken the arts throughout the Calaveras community. Uh, one of the things that I think is very exciting is that it's not, it's not limited to Calaveras County. In fact, we've got a, a program going on right now called Animalscapes, and that involves artists not only from Calaveras County, but from Tuolumne and Amador as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that project started, gosh, I want to say almost three months ago. January 16th. Okay, it was January. It was a little later than I thought, but uh, artists went on a couple of different field trips, and I went with them on one of them, and that's to the Performing Animal Welfare Society here in uh, the ARC 2000 Sanctuary here in San Andreas, and it was really interesting to see artists collecting information, mm -hmm. so to speak. Uh, they were snapping a lot of photos so that they could capture something in a painting or in a sculpture. So it's really interesting. And there were, I want to say, almost 60 people at that particular field trip. Wow. And then they took another one with um, some California Department of Fish and Wildlife folks mm -hmm. and just, just out to kind of see where the animals are. And I understand, I have not had the opportunity to see it. You're going to tell us where it's going to be. But the, um, the exhibit I've heard is just wonderful, and there are some just wonderful pieces in it. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, in fact, probably by the time this airs, it'll be out of Ironstone Vineyards, and it'll be over at Hotel it's Sutter Hotel Sutter in Sutter, 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 Creek. Sutter Creek, right downtown on the left-hand side of the old Highway 49 as right. you drive through town. And, um, and then it moves to where in Tuolumne? It's still to be announced. Oh, okay. There was, there was a slight hiccup, in, as sometimes happens, mm -hmm. you know, in the calendar. But it will be moving to Tuolumne County March 15th. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing going on right now during the wintertime with the Arts Council is ovations. And if you haven't been to an ovation show, you've missed really quality entertainment that is brought to the county for your enjoyment by this organization. Who have we got on tap coming soon? Coming up is going to be the Moak Hill Music Festival Ensemble, and they're a percussion group. And I couldn't agree with you more. I had the opportunity to, to go to the last concert because they're always at the theater at Bret Hart High School, mm -hmm. the El Dr. Elliot Smart Performing Arts Center. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the T-Sisters and they were fabulous. They do bluegrass and folk, and, and uh, they even reached all the way back and uh, pulled up a song from the Depression, um, which was Brother Can You Spare a Dime. Oh, wow. They were just wonderful, and I was thrilled with the size of the audience that we had. I, several people told me that they didn't quite know what to expect, and they're a relatively young group. They're mm -hmm. relatively new out of the Bay Area, and they just loved the show. So yeah. you weren't alone in appreciating that one. And the Moak Hill Music Festival group mm -hmm. is an intriguing batch of percussionists that a guy named Alan Biggs has brought together. They're mm -hmm. friends of his from the Bay Area who also perform down there in various orchestras and uh, they also teach. I understand that a homemade instrument made by, I can't remember his full name, but I know that in Moak Hill you'll know him as Rags. Oh, and Tuttle. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, the, um, and that instrument is part of the show. So that's going to be an interesting one because in fact I was uh, over at the Arts Council today and we were talking about has Alan sent you the information? What are they doing for this show? 
and it's even kind of difficult for him to describe. So it's going to mm -hmm. be really interesting to see how that one comes together. I saw a show that he did a solo show in Moak Hill, I want to say two years ago, and he's an incredible percussionist on just about anything that involves a hammer and a mallet and a stick. Mm -hmm. So it should be a heck of a show. It sounds like it. Yeah. And then uh, after that, the Stanford Woodwind Quintet. Right. Which is classical music. Yes. Which I just, I, I'm looking forward to it. I, I adore classical. I, like, I love it all. Love it all. But mm -hmm. I am, a, I'm always excited when you ha can have someone, a group do classical music here in Calaveras County, and you don't have to go all the way to San Francisco. Sure, that's right, and that show is on March 6th, incidentally, and on April 3rd, Gary Allegretto with Ian Espinoza, and mm -hmm. I'll be honest, like probably most of the folks in Calaveras County, I'm not familiar with these guys, but if you go digging in to what they do, suddenly all kinds of accolades pop up, mm -hmm. and they've been honored left and right for putting on a heck of a show with kind of a country bent, but not so much that it's all twangy and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So <laughs> should be a, should be a heck of a thing. Now, the beauty of these ovation shows is the tickets are just $25 a piece, mm -hmm. and I want to say 10 for youths. Yes, I believe so. And... All these shows are on Sundays. They're at 3 yeah. o'clock in the afternoon at the Bret Hart Theater. You can get in and get out, and your whole weekend hasn't been taken up. Right. All of Sunday isn't spent out at night, so you're, mm -hmm. let's say, um, delayed Monday morning. Uh, but just fantastic shows that the Arts Council puts on. Mm -hmm. And viewers here know that I'm a huge fan of Music in the Parks, and if you have not been to a Music in the Parks show why are you living in Calaveras County? Absolutely. Um, that, uh, I understand that schedule is just getting cooked up now. That's correct. In fact, we consider it one of our, our signature events. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's like a little slice of Norman Rockwell mm -hmm. back for you because you can pack a picnic basket and cold drinks or even a bottle of wine and come sit in the park. Yep. And it's not just in one park. It's not just one group. It goes from town to town to town with a different style of music, a different group every week. Um, and one of the things our viewers need to know is that uh, we don't charge for that. There's no yep. admission fee. So when we pass the hat, um, every, every dollar counts for providing music in the parks for Calaveras County. Oh. It's a great... It's a great summer tradition. My recommendation to folks, and granted, if you've brought the whole family, that you might not do this much. But what I do is I figure if I was to go and see this group perform at a bar or a club, mm -hmm. what would the cover charge be? There you go. Here's my $10 in the kitty. I threw that in the hat. In fact, that's part of the fun is they pass the hat, and by that they mean crazy hats and it's passed, <laughs> and you throw in your donations and help make this series happen. Mm -hmm. And um, it's one of those things that the more you folks give, the more the Arts Council can do to make those shows even that much better. Exactly so. How is the Arts Council doing financially? Well, we're like any organization that, de that is dependent in any way on government funding. Um, there still is funding, but it's certainly not at what it was at the heyday. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when real estate was, was exploding and everything was exploding, sure. uh, we get some funding from the government. Uh, we rely a lot on our very generous, consistent donors and sponsors. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're okay. We're, we're going, we're, the important thing for our viewer, your viewers to know is we're staying. We're going to be here. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to promote and support the arts in all sorts of forms throughout Calaveras County. Sure. We just had uh, um, a featured artist show with the artwork of Terry Wilson, who's one of the gifted painters who lives here. Many gifted painters there who live here. so many. In Calaveras County. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a lot of things planned for the coming year, um, a lot of uh, exciting new things that are going to build on old things. You, you, can, you can get anything. I bought, this is one of my favorite pieces of jewelry, and it's by a local artist, and I bought it at hmm. the Arts Council. 
So there's any Fantastic. number of ways yep. for you to um, support the arts here in Calaveras County. We're going to be just fine. The gallery is at 22 Main Street mm -hmm. in San Andreas. It's right in downtown. Uh, you can't miss it because of the big giant paintbrush <laughs> that Pete... Um, Pete's last name Kelly. will come to me soon. Pete Kelly, yes, Pete Kelly uh, made. And just, he's gifted with kind of stuff. And that was an interesting way for me to segue toward Robin and the project that you're leading up. Tell us mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. this, Robin. Mm -hmm. So I have the amazing opportunity to do, um, to help to create a project called Pieces, mm -hmm. which is to honor the victims and survivors of the Butte fire. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, when, when the fire was over, I wanted to do something. Um, and I think we all felt that need to how can I participate, yes. how can I contribute to um, all these people who have lost their homes and, and our beautiful land that has been um, scarred by the fire. And I'm a mosaic artist, and oh, okay. um, so to um, try to figure out a way that I could create some kind of um, public art, community art with mosaics was what came to my mind, and that we needed to find things that were in the rubble of the fire. Mm -hmm. um, and I was also aware that, that we had to do that very quickly before things were cleaned up and they were gone. Sure. And I knew that I needed help with um, connecting with people and with the community. And so I um, made a proposal to the Arts Council um, to do this project together. Great. And they got very excited, and it was really um, wonderful support. Mm -hmm. And um, we put out the word to collect uh, pieces out of the rubble, and we've received donations from, I believe, over 50 people. My goodness. Um, yeah, so quite a bit. That's the, fantastic. These are some examples of things that have come in mm -hmm. that we can use. We're also going to be doing, um, creating a traveling exhibit. We'll have the memorial wall, which will be a mosaic, but then we'll also have a travel, traveling exhibit that okay. will explain what the wall is and show other examples of things that were touched by the fire. So I, I brought a few pieces um, for instance, this I, I went to the um, the home site of a woman who had a piece of uh, rosewood pottery which was burned and broken and My gosh. quite a uh, a treasure for her, but no longer. Um, hmm. We received this is a, a light bulb, which is kind of an interesting thing to see. Oh my how goodness, the, that's the best abstract <laughs> art I've yeah, seen in a yeah. long time. Each, <laughs> each of these pieces are beautiful pieces of goodness. art. My goodness. We have a, a bracelet here, which um, was somebody's precious bracelet that has been reformed to me, by the heat. To me, that's fairly indicative of a lot of what I've <laughs> seen that people have grabbed from their home sites that are those things that, you know, you didn't think to grab right. as you were evacuating your home. And you kind of crossed your fingers and hoped that maybe somewhere in the bottom of the pile of your burned out home that this stuff would be. And what I'm really looking forward to seeing mm -hmm. with the wall that you create is, and this exhibit, is how these items were changed by the fire. Right. It's it's fascinating and I know that the fire was a devastating thing and we're going to be a while before we all recover from it mm -hmm. but just seeing that from the ugliness something mm -hmm. kind of cool mm -hmm. can come out of it right. I think is really interesting right and and that is true on the physical level of the things mm -hmm. um, it's also true in our personal lives and so creating a memorial like this is also a community healing and a personal healing sure that we take the broken parts of ourselves as a result of the fire and we reimagine our lives to create new lives. Mm -hmm. It's the same with these pieces, that we take these pieces where this once was the head of a doll, well, now it's going to be in a mosaic, and this is going to now uh, perhaps be part of a flower garden in a mosaic. So oh, these things sweet. are reimagined. Yes. And um, with healing art, um, the, the hope is that that will be an effect for the community and for the people. They can see that these things became beautiful. These things that could have gone in the trash are mm -hmm. not in the trash. They're now a piece of art. And oh, this, 
a lot of what's just in this little container here. It looks like a bunch of jewels. Maybe, yeah, yeah. That's just now this really cool, funky forms that I know that someone with a real talent for putting things together, like yourself, <laughs> um, is really almost going to have a field day. Yeah, with. it's really when, quite exciting. When do you exciting. start building the wall? Uh, well, the wall actually won't get built until probably June into the end of August. Okay. So now what I'm doing in my studio in Murphy's is I am going through all the pieces, cleaning them, mm -hmm. preparing them. We have quite a few dishes. And so I oh, need to okay. prepare the dishes to be, um, become small pieces of, mm -hmm. um, for the mosaic. And once we see all the different colors and different types of pieces we have, then we'll create a design. I'm also working with Ann wow. Cook, who um, has Acme Art in Mokalami Hill. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is also a mosaic artist, and we're going to be working together to create the design of the wall. Will the wall be something that winds up being mobile or will it? No, no, no. Where it'll be it? concrete. Do we, do we yeah. know where it's going yes, to be Yes, it's going to be in uh, Mountain Ranch. Oh, okay, yeah. great. Yeah, it'll be a Mountain Ranch um, near the community park. And okay. um, no, it'll be a permanent That's perfect permanent wall. because that has been kind of ground zero in yeah. the community for where sort of right. all of the relief efforts have landed. Right. and kind of where a lot of the losses happen too. So that's really something. You know, it's amazing. You, you pointed this doll's head out, and I would never in a million years have guessed that was a doll head. Mm -hmm. It looks like it was created as this little small bust mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. that's just amazing. Mm -hmm. And then, my gosh, yeah, the glass. glass with a screw embedded in it. I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah, now, a lot of the glass that has been donated may not be able to go in the wall because mm -hmm. it's sharp. Sure. So we have to be careful with the pieces that we put in that it's not going to be a um, hazardous to children sure. who, you know, come in contact with the wall. Mm -hmm. So so what we're going to do is, is be able to display the glass like that in the traveling exhibit also. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. And how soon will the traveling exhibit come together? Well, Any I think idea? we hope to have that um, by May and June. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So this is one of those that's going to be a little bit of time coming. Yeah, but it'll that's take... because there's a lot of work ahead for yeah, you there's a lot and some of, other there artists. There is a lot of work, uh, work ahead and that we have to get the wall built first before we can mosaic it. How do you, how do, you do that? Um, well, I have to find some strong people <laughs> <laughs> who want to help me. Mm -hmm. And so we'll have to uh, pour a footing and build okay. cinder block wall. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be approximately six feet long and about four feet high. Okay. And uh, so once, once that's prepared, um, I have to find some nice people who might want to volunteer to mm -hmm. um, help build that wall. And um, then and then we will um, begin. I, I didn't want to get started with this in the winter, in the spring, with all the weather. Sure. It was better to wait until we have good weather. Oh, yeah. And then, and then we're going to unveil the wall and share it with the community um, as um, an to celebrate the anniversary, or it's not really, we're not celebrating the fire, are we? Yeah. But we're celebrating I, I our, what you mean, though. Right. that we that have survived kind of... the fire. Mm -hmm. um, and that will be September um, 10th, which is a Saturday. Okay. We'll, we'll have an opening of the... We also want to do collaboration with other artists in the area, and mm -hmm. particularly writers. Oh, okay. And I'm inviting writers to um, come and to see these pieces. Mm -hmm. um, because when you look at these pieces, they're quite amazing. This is a box that has um, a man's cufflinks inside with still some ashes. Oh they make you think of the stories that were involved. Sure. And who were these people and what did these mean? So writers can use their imagination to put words um, to some of these pieces. Well, I, while you were talking there, and I'll, I'll see if I can get one of the cameras to see this, these are three pieces of flatware out of the kitchen. This looks mm -hmm. like it was regular old sort of flatware, and yet it's been fused up here with some glass and some, and I'm getting little, little flecks of stuff on my fingers, but it's just, you know, and now it's this interesting piece that could almost have come from someone's table setting. Yeah. Uh, just amazing. Yeah, it how, is amazing. How that intense heat, mm -hmm. uh, transform these things. And uh, again, I think that bracelet and I will admit that fluorescent light bulb is just mm -hmm. one of the most fascinating things I've seen from all of this. Yeah, it is. It's really quite amazing. And I, th I think you're on the right track with with something that can 
be healing because we we might take a look at something like that and think, wow, that's what happens when one of those light bulbs gets too hot. Mm -hmm. And we can almost laugh a little bit at it mm -hmm. and not see it as an, oh no, I bet the house was gone because that light bulb mm -hmm. got so hot. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to mm -hmm. see how this wall comes together. Yeah. And um, I will throw this out there calaverisarts.org is the website. I don't think we have that for a graphic here, but I would imagine that there are ways to click and link there, and I know we've got the phone number too, but get in touch with Robin if you're interested in helping with this, if you'd like to help build the wall. Yeah, help, and, uh, that's what we really need help with, is helping mm -hmm. to build the wall. And I know they're working to, to help refurbish the park too because mm. it really took a beating mm. uh, because it was the staging area mm. for so much of this relief effort and there are softball games to be played this mm. summer. I, pl mm. I played some of those games with Phil Alberts on that field myself so mm. I hope they get their park back to where it needs to be at least so that they can get some games played. Now, what else has the Arts Council kind of got coming up? I know you're also active with uh, arts in schools. How does that how does that manifest these days? Well, that's that's going to go through the Calaveras County um, Office of Education. Okay. And where we encourage teachers to and their schools, their their principals, to approach us. Mm -hmm. um, as we had alluded to before, the funding has been reduced mm -hmm. uh, to the Arts Council, but that doesn't mean that we can't find money to at least help you uh, achieve an art project. If you've got something in, in mind for your school, you know, because it's very much a volunteer process. Mm -hmm. um, I'm preaching to the choir here when I say that <laughs> teachers, teachers have so much mandated curriculum oh, sure. mm -hmm. on their plates, they don't always have the opportunity anymore uh, to, to, to have Friday afternoon was art when I was in school in Mokel. Mm -hmm. That's not yeah. always the case anymore, but we always encourage the schools to contact us. We're in touch with all of the superintendents from all of the districts mm -hmm. and just let us know what's going on. Um, like I said, we may not be able to fund it all, but maybe we can help. Well, and I know one of the crowning events in arts and education mm -hmm. is coming up in May at Jenny Lind Elementary School. That's the arts day there. Mm -hmm. and. I've been down there a few times, and I will never forget the afternoon session with um, musicians performing, the entire student body out in the quad there at Jenny Lind Elementary, mm -hmm. after they spent the morning, because what the, the beauty of this day, folks, is that there are probably 30 to 40 artists, I want to say, and they mm -hmm. all take over classrooms on campus. Mm -hmm. And the kids rotate through getting 45-minute sessions where they might make a mask in this session, and they might learn to play the drums in this session, and they might tell stories or make puppets in this session. And it's just fantastic. And then this, this culminating event was the inimitable Wes Craven. <laughs> who, who did, you know, former educator himself, so he really knows how to connect with kids. But he proceeded, and he's known for his found object instruments. He makes mm -hmm. instruments out of anything. Mm -hmm. Ask him about his bedponium, or bedpanium, I believe he calls it. And it is actually a banjo made out of a bedpan, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. So, But he, is, he was so captivating to the kids. Mm -hmm. They had a conga line that involved the entire student body. Mm -hmm. Isn't that great? And just to see the kids thrill at the arts and to be shown by so many artists from this area how you can... Maybe not completely make a living, but you can sure have the arts as a big portion of your life mm -hmm. as you grow into your adulthood. Like you say, we kind of lament the fact that art class has been one of those that suffered, along with music and other programs at our schools. Mm -hmm. That's the fault of our state legislators, who you folks are not voting for correctly, but that's your <laughs> fault, not mine. That's a whole other um, show. Yeah, that's a whole different story. Um, yeah, I could fill a half hour talking about how our legislature has pillaged and plundered education. Yes, you could. But, that said, it's wonderful to see the Arts Council helping kids enjoy the arts. And there's even the Art Spirit Art Show. I was just going to bring that up. And we'll have that, Art Spirit. That should be that coming in, up in March. It is March. It's okay, in so March, yeah. Where we, where we highlight, where we showcase the artwork of oh, young yes. artists. 
and I have seen some amazing pieces there, and mm -hmm. you'd be amazed. It's one might be by a high school sophomore, mm -hmm. just some young woman who is coming into our artistic own, and you get the chance to purchase those paintings and works, and that's part of the beauty of that show, too, is the Arts Council helps the students learn how to price your art. What is right. your time in creating this worth? So I can't wait to see that show, too. We're getting short on time, and I want to make sure we don't miss anything. So is okay. there anything that we haven't touched on that's coming soon and we need to watch for? I don't believe so at this moment. Okay. We're going to have um, a number of changes coming uh, okay. in this year. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll definitely. Do I don't know of an organization that doesn't have fundraisers. That's right. Yep. You know, in fact, you have to have a, a, a raffle and a tri-tip dinner sometimes. <laughs> and but a silent auction. Silent au that was where I was going, was silent auction. We will be having a fundraiser. We will be, um, we've got a lot of exciting ideas. We've got a, a lot of, we're very blessed in that we have some serious anchors still on our board of directors who have mm -hmm. that great depth of memory. And oh, returning anchors. And re yeah, and returning anchors, <laughs> thank you. But we've also got new people on the board with new energy and new ideas. Um, so along with pieces, we're going, we're very excited about helping Calaveras County rise from the ashes mm -hmm. and heal through art. Yep, yep. So there, there will be a lot of things coming, coming out this year. Well, that's fantastic. I cannot wait, Robin, to mm. see pieces mm -hmm. in all of its permutations mm -hmm. and manifestations. And uh, like I said, visit the Arts Council website. Call the number here on your screen right now, 754-1774. Ask how you can get involved. Mm -hmm. Ask how you can make a donation. Ask what you can do to help the arts succeed in this county. It's a beautiful bunch of people who, most of whom volunteer their time and they don't get the pats on the, on the back that they usually should. And um, I'm here to tell you folks, they deserve all the pats on the back they get. I congratulate both of you for your involvement Thank you. in the organization. And ladies and gentlemen, it's been a great one and we'll keep on getting greater <laughs> as the Arts Council leads the way. So. Thanks for joining me on Mondo Calaveras. I'm Mike Taylor. We'll see you next time. Enjoy.